All right, Shalom. <coughs> you know, start by giving all the praises, of glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rahul Chakwadash. Good ones to the elder apostles of the great millstone who rule well and has always peace of citations. To the for elect tabernacle of David scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And uh, all I got to say is weak, weak. You got to come harder than this, my man. This was weak. All right, and uh, before I even get into it, man, you know, just as a disclaimer, um, I'm I'm back on the uh, the GMS Vegas sit downs 144K page. And that was a uh, strike to my other page, you know, our, our live show that we did this past weekend. So I won't be able to post back on there for uh, two weeks. But uh, Lord willing, they don't try to give me for anything else on that channel. You know, by uh, the 26th, which is uh. The day that uh, my other strike will be expired, but you know that that, that that's gonna happen. You know this devil, you know he's uh since he's sensitive to the truth, and you can't bring the truth out, or he'll uh, persecute you for it. So uh you know it's back to this page right here. Now this is where you'll see uh, my videos posted at. So anyway, you know getting getting to it, so as y'all can see. This uh, false prophet right here, seed of Israel, you know, he got backed into a corner, you know, brothers got on his case, you know, and, and uh, the elder brother, Manatha Zagba, you know, his video caught his attention and, uh, you know, he got hurt and uh, he called himself calling the brother out to come on his platform to, to debate, you know, because he got embarrassed and uh, the brother basically told him, you know, we don't do debates. And uh, he had the, this guy has the nerve to call the brother a coward because he would not come on his platform and give him, you know, that 15 minutes. All right. And uh, that doesn't make the brother a coward because he won't come on your platform and debate you. We know that a lot of these people that come to watch these videos, they're they're here not for edification. They're here to be entertained. And that's that's one thing we don't do. All right. We do we don't do this thing for entertainment. Uh, we do this thing because, you know, one, the Lord gave us the command to feed the sheep. Uh, we we're, we're commanded to uh, you know, preach this gospel, and truth and sincerity. We also, uh, we're we're supposed to uh, you know, edify, you know, build each other up, build up our understanding, uh, build up our faith. Build up our character. That's that's what we're to do. We're not here to entertain anyone. And also, the brother, you know, and this is what he left out, you know, when he spoke on him. The brother actually said he actually uh, invited you to the highway in, in, in Hedges. Because that's, that's the place where you know we, we will be every weekend. All right. So I don't think that was cowardly at all. He said, if you basically <laughs> I'm, I'm out there on, on the street or when people see me, people see my face. I'm out there in the, in the public. So, you know, if you really want that smoke, just pull up. The brother would have had no issue you coming out and, you know, dealing. So, you know, this guy, he's uh, he, he's emotional. And and he's hurt. His pride is hurt. So this is what he has to resort to. All right. But we got to call you out, man. The scriptures say we we're to be on the defense for the gospel. That's the only reason why we make these response videos. Now we have to uh, defend the gospel and call out the false prophets. Matter of fact, let me get uh, Romans sixteen and seventeen and eighteen real quick. And it says, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses, all right, stumblings, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. So if you're teaching a, a, another doctrine outside of what we teach, we're going to mark you. We're going to put you on the summer, grant, uh, the summer jam screen, so to speak. Uh, we're going to highlight your name. Uh, we're going to put your channel up 
on blast and we're going to basically you know tell teach and show our our followers our listeners that these guys are off they teach in a contrary doctrine all right for they that are such serve not our lord yahweh mashiach but their own belly and your own emotions is attached to your to your belly all right this guy he's he, he's emotional and you know based on what i observe you know most of the uh the people that i see following this guy are a bunch of women and we know what the scriptures say on how you're going to have those who will sub subvert whole houses and lead captive silly women laden with iniquity all right the scriptures say that you know they're ever learning but never able to come into the knowledge of the truth a lot of our people they seek the doctrine as closest to their feelings so of course if you teaching this kind of doctrine or that you know your father has nothing to do with your nationality but you you basically your mother determines that then uh you know these women they love that all right so most of these women are going to support you because they support that narrative all right but we know according to the scriptures that's a that's that's a falsehood all right so we mark you that cause divisions contrary to the doctrine and we're to avoid you and we all we we, we are to warn others to avoid you all right it says and by good words and fair speeches deceive the heart to the simple and you know you had a lot of simpletons that I'm pretty sure they got persuaded. All right, just being fed with this garbage. All right, the simple believeth every word, but the prudent man look well to what's going. If if, if you have any discernment, all right, and, and and you know how to judge intelligently, you you watch his video. You go and watch our video and you would go and search out the scriptures for yourself instead of letting your emotions dictate what's true and what's not i know these women already chose according to their feelings so we're not concerned with the, with the women on, on, on your on your comment board your followers we're dealing with the facts we're dealing with the with the scriptures man all right to the law to the testimony so one more thing before i actually uh you know hit the play button and address you know uh uh an argument he tries to make um he also brings up this whole rape thing which is the very it's the very straw man and, it, and it's the same old tacky tired tactic all right, the same old straw man of pointing out the rape uh, uh, law. I mean, there was really no point at all in even bringing that up when we're discussing or we're supposed to be talking about the topic of you being what your father is. What the hell does that have to do with the argument of whether you're of your father or not? That's just an, that's just another straw man to tap into the emotions of his followers well before before i get into this let me let me tell you what they teach oh they teach that you know you can you can rape women and they and and when they do this you know they intend to um defame us because their listeners believe that we're actually teaching brothers to go around and do such a thing and they know that's not the case we be all over uh, mainstream news. We be all over uh, social media. Brother, you know, a brother will be locked up under the jail. This is how you know that he wants to get the emotions involved in this whole thing. And that's not what you do to win a debate. All right. So you pretty much when you did that, you already lost credibility. Just deal with the topic at hand. 
all right so anyway let's deal with this man now the first thing he uh goes into is uh he goes into the uh joseph because that was one of the points that the brother used against him to prove that you are what your father is because if that's if that's not the case then uh Ephraim and Manasseh, whose mother was an Egyptian, they would not be considered the sons of Joseph. That means that they would not be a part of the inheritance because their mother was not was was a non-Israelite. Which is basically that you could drop the mic with that. You you could end the 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 debate right there because they were still considered the patriarchs. But this reprobate, even though that's a fact, he has to create a loophole argument. So let's listen to his loophole argument, his loophole explanation, his excuse. And I'm going to answer it. And we're going to go to the scriptures. So let me pull it up. He uh, addressed me with a question. So I'm going to see if you can see this. Can you all see that? And another thing before. Before I uh, move on, where are you other Israelite groups at, man? What's up with you other uh, Israelite camps? Because we know y'all be watching us to see if we saying something about y'all. Why y'all not getting on this? You dudes are full of shit out there, man. <laughs> y'all should be getting on this too. Cause this is a this is a complete heresy. All right, this is a complete heresy, and it tells you that in uh, Second Peter, but there were false prophets among among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who shall privately bring in damnable heresies. All right, this is a straight up heresy, man. So let let let's continue. I think y'all can all see it. All right, so this is the question that he asked me. And brother, feel uh, free to chime in anytime. If you can't hear me, just let me know. All right. All right. It's, John, uh, I'm here. Uh, okay, good. It says, don't run. Now, this is the question that he's he's addressing to me. All right, he says, don't run. He says, how can Joseph's son be Israelites when clearly their mother is a heathen? Genesis 46, 20. And unto Joseph in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim, and Asenath, the daughter of uh, Potiphar, priest of On, bare unto him. Now, and then he goes on to say, if any, if, if any of you bug outs come on this comet running interference, you will be ignored. This question is to the one individual, and that is the author of this video only. Now, the video that he's referring to is the video I did some days ago titled, You Are Who Your Father Is, Destroy It in Four Minutes or Less. All right, so let's let's address this question right quick. So let's bring up Genesis chapter 41 and 45. Let me see if I can make that, hope y'all hope y'all can see that. So Genesis 41 and 45, y'all can write these scriptures down. And it goes on to say, and Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zephnepaneah, and he gave him to wife, Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar's priest of An. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. All right, so what y'all got to realize, there's several things going on here. So first of all, Joseph was sold into slavery. All right, Joseph was sold into slavery. Now, as we read that, Joseph was a servant unto Pharaoh. Now y'all can call it with y'all with what y'all want. Even when he was made governor of Egypt, he was still a servant unto Pharaoh. All right. Joseph did not choose his wife. I just read you a scripture saying that Pharaoh gave Pharaoh was the one who chose the wife. And see, y'all gotta realize, uh brothers and sisters, this was way before they even came out of Exodus. Because remember Joseph had uh, sent for his brothers and they lived prosperous lives and everything, you know, until a new Pharaoh rose up and then they were in captivity for so for, for hundreds. So now 
after he didn't read that because this this actually is a direct cut to his whole argument so now what does he have to do he has to filibuster and he has to create nothing but loophole explanations and he's clearly not answering the question he's only making excuses all that that you said the fact that he became governor the fact that he was sold in the in the slavery to the egyptians the fact that you know he wasn't uh he didn't choose his wife he was you know given his wife how how what does any of that have to do with him being the nationality and the seed of his father seriously seriously hundreds of years what does what what do any of this have any relevance to how he's determined if he's of this he's of the nationality of his father these are all excuses you're not answering the question at all you would have lost the debate already <laughs> come on man let's let, let's let, let's hear a little more of what he's trying to say so there was no law written against this at the time and then also the each so so now this is his argument because at this time they wasn't under the law so because they wasn't under the law Ephraim and Manessa are the exception to the rule so now we creating we, we we're creating rules are you kidding me but let, let's entertain that 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 notion we wasn't under the law at the time well wasn't there oral tradition of the law did 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 not they practice things that were contained in the law even before the law was brought forth through Moses. We can easily uh, prove this. Let's go to Genesis 4. See, what you got to understand is when the Lord put the breath into us and we became living souls, that was when the Lord actually gave us the, the understanding. He gave us the instruction. That's what made us a, a, a living souls. Okay, this 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 this, this uh, wisdom, which is the the law. Let's let's go to the apocrypha real quick, and let's see what the breath is. It's like your wisdom of Solomon. This is a wisdom of Solomon 7 and 24 says for wisdom is more moving than any motion she passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness for she is the breath of the power of the most high and a pure influence flowing from that glory of the almighty therefore can no defiled thing fall into her so what is the breath that he uh, uh breathed into the nostrils of the uh, of 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 adam the, this wisdom and it trickled down to his descendants the sons of god which is why the lord got fed up when he saw that the sons of god intermingled with the the uh the daughters of of men and they became corrupted and they fell they became the fallen ones that was because they fell into idolatry dealing with those other women and they lost their way they corrupted their way but they were still the sons of god they were still the sons of god even to this very day 
It was a seed line. It was a chosen seed line. All right? We were the ones that was to carry on the legacy of this of this wisdom. So let, let, let's let's prove that we can deal with this very story right here. All right, because you know the previous chapter when it goes into Adam and Eve, they ate of the the, uh, the 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 tree in the garden, the tree of life, and then you have to also the, the the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he told he specifically told them, don't eat of the tree of the of, of good and evil. Don't learn the ways and practices of these other nations. Just stick with the, the the instruction, which was the tree of life. But but of course, being who Eve was in, in, in her nature, she rebelled. So let's let's deal with Cain and Abel for a sec. And this is way before Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob was on the scene. Way before Moses. So this is uh, Genesis 4. And uh, one, it says, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and, and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Now, why are they, why are they bringing forth offerings to the Lord? I thought that wasn't until after. I thought that wasn't until the time of Moses. This is way before Moses. Why are they bringing offerings unto the Lord? That's because the law was always in effect. It just wasn't written on stone. All right? And Abel, he also bought, brought of the firstlings of his flock are a proper offering and of the fat thereof and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect and Cain was very rough and his countenance fell and I don't even have to finish the story I already know this but I have to pull this out to show that the law was 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 indeed in effect back then prior to uh Moses all right. So that's no excuse at all. And you're wrong. And that's just one. That's just that's just one example. All right, Job, he was also a priest. Let, let's let's prove that. Is uh, Job one? Hold up. Yep. Job one and one. It says there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared the Most High and eschewed evil. All right. And let's jump down to verse four. It says, and his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day. And sent and called for three for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned. How do you sin? Through transgression of the law, right? And cursed the Most High in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. And Job was around prior to um, uh, the time of uh, Moses. All right. So that's another example. Let's deal with Noah now. Let's see why the Lord had Noah put those clean beasts into that vessel. Genesis 7, 
and 1. It says, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in his generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to, to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Now why did he want the clean ones to, to, to come by sevens and an unclean by two? Because he was going to need plenty of food to last him while he was on that ark while the Lord flooded the earth. But he only needed two because they would be able to uh, uh, multiply to preserve the species on the earth. Bring two of those so that they can be preserved. The seven is so that y'all can have plenty of food and still uh, preserve. So the law was definitely in effect way before Moses. What are you talking about? You see? So, this is a weak argument. And it does not negate the fact that Joseph's two sons had a, 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 a Egyptian, a heathen mother. And they still got the inheritance. They still got the blessing. So, I mean, I don't even have, I don't really have to go any further. You lost all credibility when you made that statement that this was before the law. You out of your mind. So, I mean, you know, you can very well just off of this, you could tell how the rest of the the, 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 the lesson or the video is going to go. A lot of filibustering, a lot of uh, misuse of scripture. But he's he 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 does not debunk anything. Why don't you address our questions directly, man? I made two videos. I said answer answer if Esau because he went and had his sons with two Canaanite women and an Ishmaelite woman. Do they still count as the children of Edom? Because there's still Edomites on the planet Earth today. And then I also came back and, and did a video concerning Jephthah. I asked, what would you consider or what is, you know, what nationality is uh, Jephthah? Because the scripture referred to him as a Gileadite. You say that you're not of your, uh, your, your father. You're not what your father is. So why is he known as a, a Gileadite? So, you know, that that's pretty much it, man. This is this is weak. You got to come stronger than this. But I understand you have a lying spirit on you. Let me let me let me get that. Let me get. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel. 14 and uh, 9. All you false prophets, you got to get called out before you get judged. And there's going to be a lot of people that's going to follow you, you know, to their destruction, man. Ezekiel 14 and 9, it says, And if the prophet be deceived when he have spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. All right? You call yourself the seed of Israel. <laughs> Ironic. It says, and they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. So that means everybody that were persuaded and convinced by this guy, they're going to be punished right along with you. All right, and when you and, and and as usual, you know when you look at these uh chats, this is when you know that people are watching to be entertained versus being edified. This is how you know when it's you know the spirit 
ain't really on them. Because normally, you'll see precepts being posted in, in the chat. But instead, are you seeing it just people, you know, leaving their opinion, you know, slandering, ad hominem attacks, call, you know, calling us names? Where's the precepts at? And you got a bunch of women talking shit on here. Totally out of pocket, man. The Lord ain't dealing with, with, with these uh, people, man. the hell out of here man all this pussy pandering this is all to please these uh women so you know it is what it is man all right you 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 don't have any credibility my man all right this was totally weak this is a weak attempt man and all you false prophets you're gonna be revealed that's just what's going to happen, man. You a false prophet. All right? So uh, I'm, I'm going to end off with that, man. I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to y'all by Shemiah Washai. And until the next lesson, Shalom.